Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and right above me is one of the most powerful particle accelerators in the universe. Essentially an extremely fast spinning black hole with extremely powerful magnetic fields that generates these very powerful astrophysical jets that then release all of these particles nearly at the speed of light, very often over 99.9% .9 of the speed of light. But naturally particle accelerators also exist here on planet Earth, some of them much larger and much more powerful than others. For example, this is the one in the US in the Fermi National Lab. But there are obviously even larger ones available in Europe. But they do come in different shapes and sizes, and they actually serve very different purposes. This one here is mostly used for research. Smaller ones, or the ones that are usually not circular, are often also used for various scientific purposes or even for medical purposes. Here's an example of a hospital accelerator that produces extremely powerful X-rays, usually by accelerating electrons, for either scanning purposes or, more often, in various types of treatments, often involving some kind of a destruction of tissue that requires a lot of precision. As a matter of fact, nearly 30,000 different particle accelerators exist on planet Earth and are used for a tremendous amount of various reasons, with many often used for some kind of a scanning purpose, not necessarily for research purposes. And that's because particle accelerators are extremely good at accelerating, for example, electrons, which can then start producing extremely powerful radiation, specifically very powerful X-rays, produced when electrons usually find themselves in extremely powerful magnetic fields or experience very high acceleration. We usually refer to this as synchrotron radiation. And so this is actually one of the main ways scientists usually produce extremely powerful hard X-rays, which makes the particle accelerator technology extremely useful for many different reasons. But it does have a bit of a problem, and you can probably see this problem behind me. To make these powerful emissions, or to produce these very powerful X-rays, we do require these very large constructions. And most of the particle accelerators today will usually accelerate the particles in a very similar way. They will usually accelerate electrons using very powerful electric fields inside a long tunnel with various metal tubes connected to one another. But the strength of the electric field inside these tubes is usually at its maximum. Making it even a little bit higher will usually result in a powerful lightning storm inside these tubes, which can actually damage them or even destroy them completely. And so since we can't make the electric field stronger on the inside, the only other solution in order to accelerate things faster is to make these tubes longer. And the longer the tube, the higher acceleration you can produce at the end, with obviously the circular formations, in theory allowing us to accelerate things even higher and allowing us to reach even higher velocities. But making these kilometer or several kilometer long structures is obviously first of all not cheap, also not really efficient, and involves a lot of financial and logistical issues. But these X-rays, these hard X-rays, are becoming even more important in a lot of different fields. So for example today they're used by various large companies in the field of electronics research, various types of medical and drug research, or any other kind of research involving molecular structure where you actually have to be able to produce the image of what it is you're building. You can actually learn about some of this research in one of the links in the description. This is from the Stanford University and their extremely powerful LCLS, Linux Coherent Light Source. The tool has been used for a lot of different types of research and it's actually quite in demand despite its extremely high costs. But that's of course using this old way, using the metal tubes and electric fields. What if we try to do this a different way? by using something entirely different and by building something extremely small. By using plasma, lasers, and a very interesting phenomenon that we kind of observe here on Earth when dealing with, for example, water. Okay, so imagine a boat going on the water. You'll notice that it produces a wake behind it. But deep inside the wake, there's also a structure where in theory you can actually surf, acquiring some of the velocity from the moving boat. This is often referred to as wake surfing, but this particular phenomenon can also be applied to other types of waves. For example, waves or different disturbances created inside plasma when something extremely powerful travels through it. This phenomenon is sometimes referred to as wake field acceleration, but a very specific type of this acceleration known as laser wake field acceleration, originally discovered back in 1979, was demonstrated at small scale in 1995. Although that original discovery in 1995 was at extremely small scales, and this is actually where the limitation was. The scientists weren't really sure how to employ this to larger scales in order to create even larger acceleration. And that's of course until now. In the recent study, the scientists were able to accelerate electrons using this technique 
achieving nearly a speed of light by using something that was only about 20 centimeters in length. Using a phenomenon produced by very powerful lasers as they travel through thick plasma. But the previous type of an accelerator would have to be at least a few hundred meters in size in order to achieve the same results. But how does all of this work? Well, it turns out it's not really that difficult to understand. If you were to take a cloud of plasma, which is basically ionized hydrogen that has both positive and negative charged particles on the inside, but also generally acts kind of like a fluid, it then becomes possible to manipulate this plasma by sending various electrical fields through it. But it also becomes possible to create various types of waves here by creating different types of charge separation, or essentially separating the negative and positive charges, which in essence starts producing something equivalent to waves inside the plasma itself. And so understanding that you can actually create waves inside plasma, the scientists can then try to manipulate it to create that wake field effect. And they can do so very effectively by using a very specifically shaped laser, or by using an appropriately shaped pulse of laser that can disturb the waves in just the right way, they can then force these electrons to start surfing the wake, very similar to how this surfer is doing it on the water. And because of this, this is sometimes also known as the surfatrons instead of accelerators. And so by using two laser pulses sent through this hydrogen gas, the scientists were able to trap the electrons, allowing them to accelerate nearly to the speed of light, with the first laser pulse punching a kind of a hole through the plasma, and the second more powerful pulse scooping up the electrons and sending them along the wake, accelerating them to very high velocities, with the current energy for the electrons being approximately 5 giga electron volts, or approximately 40% of what you would achieve in a much larger kilometer size particle accelerator such as the one you see right here. But obviously using much less energy, using way less space, but more importantly using a groundbreaking technology and phenomenon that up until recently was really only more or less theoretical and has only been demonstrated at very small scales. But this time they were able to create something much larger that allowed them to punch a hole through the plasma, keeping the energy focused and preventing the beam from falling apart. And so it was really through the precise control of hydrogen plasma that the scientists were able to create these very high velocities. But because this has worked so efficiently this time, it's quite possible that this might be the beginning of a completely new era for particle acceleration, with this particular technique potentially being applied to a lot of other stuff as well. Technically, we can produce waves and wakes in a lot of different conditions in a lot of different materials. And so by applying something like this, but in a different environment, we might be able to achieve high velocities in quite a lot of other areas, potentially even going beyond electron research. But as always, this is just the beginning. We don't really know where all of this goes, we just know that this is groundbreaking and this will definitely change the technology we currently use. Which actually reminds me of something from my childhood and probably from a lot of your childhoods. We've all used to have particle accelerators in our homes and they actually brought a lot of happiness to us. A typical TV set using cathode ray tubes, the old school TVs as they're known, were technically miniature particle accelerators. For example, the CRT monitor I used for years and years when I started using the internet was basically accelerating particles toward me and producing quite a lot of entertainment and education. And so naturally, these particle accelerators have always been part of our lives. But obviously, these were not producing X-rays and were producing much lower frequencies. And so even though we might assume that particle accelerators is just the domain of science, in reality, they used to be pretty much everywhere in every home. But that's beside the point. Anyway, so pretty exciting research, pretty exciting discovery, and something we'll discuss more once the scientists figure out how to use this and how to apply this to an actual device that we can use for research. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.